Majesty this morning. You come. All right, we'll be in a pretty easy part to find this morning. We'll be in Genesis chapter number one, starting off. So, shouldn't take y'all too long to find that. I hope not. So. But, uh, Lord put this on my heart uh, several months ago, and He uh, allowed me to study it out uh, late last night into this morning some. And uh, I don't know why, but I feel just about more nervous to preach this than I have in a long time. I don't know. I don't know why, but I feel feel like God's really, really wanting to tell us something this morning. I'm going to talk about the blessing of being human this morning. The blessing of being human. We go through a lot of battles. We go through a lot of fights in our life and say, God, why in the world do I have to go through this? Why in the world do I have to go through this hard time in my life? But with the, all the opportunities that God has given us, it way outweighs the battles. It way outweighs the fight. It's way better to be human. I would rather be me this morning than I would be this grass out in the yard. That grass can't do nothing. That grass just grows, comes up, and gets chopped right off. I have the opportunity to grow and keep growing and keep growing. And then eventually I get the opportunity to be able to go to heaven and be with my, me with my heavenly father. I'm going to start reading in Genesis chapter 1. And uh, verse number 26 this morning, I'm going to read a few verses here and then we'll skip down a little bit, a little bit later on. But uh, verse number 26 says, and God said, let us make man in our own Im or in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Let us pray this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray to Lord that you touch us this morning. Lord, help us, God, to see how blessed we truly are. God, to see how much you've given us. God, Lord, all the things that you've allowed us to be a part of. God, everything that you've given us. God, you're so good. We're so unworthy. God, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you, God, for what you've, for what you've helped us with so far. Thank you, Lord, for creation. Thank you, Lord, that you were pleased with creation. Thank you, Lord, that you are the creator. You are the author. You are the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord, for it. Pray to Lord that you touch us this morning. Give us what you want. Give us what we need, Father. Thank you, Lord. It's in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Now, God didn't pick any sort of animal, any sort of plant or anything to show his love and to show and to shed his blessings on. He picked humans. Yes. He picked the human race. Amen. He didn't pick the birds in the air. He didn't pick the fish that's in the sea. He picked us. Yes. He Amen. picked us to love. Yes. First off, we're going to look that man was handcrafted. Yeah. He was handcrafted. Crafted. Every other creation up to this point, God spoke it yes. into existence. Yes. Nowhere in this part right here it says God spoke it. He said, let us create yeah. man. Yeah. Let's yeah. come together and create man. Yeah. Let's Amen. put our thoughts together. Let's take our time with this one. I'm going to make this one exactly how I want it. I'm going to take my time yeah. with it. I want to show my blessing on this one. The ground, the water, the light, the creatures, the trees, the plants, everything, God spoke it. And you talk about a powerful God that can just speak it into existence. Yeah, yeah. Right. But God took his time with you. Yeah. Yeah. God didn't have to. Yeah. God could have spoke you into existence. Said, I want him to have blue eyes, brown hair. I want him to I want him to have a beard. I want him to have white skin. I want him to have brown skin. I want him to have black skin. I, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. God could have done that. Yeah. But God said, no, I'm going to take my time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take my time with this one. You are exactly how God wanted you to be. Amen. You look exactly how God had, God wanted you to look. Amen. I don't care how, how, how much you weigh. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care what the color of your hair is. God created you to be exactly how he wanted you to be. You look how God wants you to look. You breathe how God wants you to breathe. Everything that you do, God knows that that's how you, how you were created to do it. God designed you to be exactly how he wants you to be. Amen. Second off, we've got man 
was breathed upon. Man was breathed upon. We're going to look at Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 7. And the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Man was nothing until God breathed upon him. Man was just laying in the dirt over here. He was laying in the dust. He was nothing. God said, I'm going to breathe on him. So I'm going to breathe the breath of life into his nostrils. Because God loves us. But man was, he was taking up space. Until God breathed on him. Yeah. Yeah. He was doing nothing. Yeah. We were useless until God put his touch on us. Yeah. And that's the, that's the same thing today. If, we, if God does not have his touch on us, if we are not doing God's will, we are useless. Yeah. We are taking up space. Yeah. We are taking up precious space. We're breathing in God's precious air and yeah. we're wasting it. Yeah. We have to do what God's will is for our life. Yeah. Every single day. God saw that man was going to fall in the garden. God saw that. He knew that it was going to happen. He knew it before he ever created man. He knew it before he ever created earth. He knew it before he ever created the garden of Eden. But God still breathed the breath of life in us because he loved us. God didn't come down in the cool of the day to go walk with the lions, to go fly with the birds, to go swim with the fish. He came down to walk with man. He come down to worship with man because he desired that fellowship. That is what we were created for was fellowship with God. And then once man fell, that fellowship was lost. That fellowship was broken. That's why God hates sin so much. It's because it, it puts, that, puts that wall, puts that barrier between God and man. And you've got to break through that barrier of sin to be able to fellowship with, with God again. Thank God that God breathed into his nostrils, yeah. into the man's nostrils. God breathed out because God has no need of anything. I didn't think of this till brother. I was listening to Brother Daniel the other day. God is in need of nothing. So God breathed out. He didn't breathe back in. God doesn't need us. God doesn't need anything. God does not depend on us. God chooses to depend on us. He doesn't have to. Thank God that God doesn't depend on on nothing else. He, de- he chooses us to, be, uh, to depend on. My God is still alive. Yes. You know why? Because God breathed. You've got to have life. You've got to have breath to be able to have life. Yes. Everything requires a breath of some sort. Whether grass, grass releases air. Trees release air. There's, uh, everything in this world breathes. My God's alive, not like all these other little gods. My God's not Allah. My God's not that. My God is Jehovah. Jehovah Yahweh. That is my God. I didn't, and I also didn't notice this until I heard Brother Daniel say it the other day and got my got my wheels to turn. I've been spinning on it since then. Allah is a moon god. What is the moon? What what does it depend on? It depends on the sun. Yes. Can you imagine serving a God that has to depend on something else? Yeah. Our God don't have to depend on nothing else. Yeah. Our God, we depend on our God. Yes. Our God is dependable. Yes. Thank God that I have a dependable God. Amen. Thirdly, we've got man was given free will. Yeah. Man was given free will. God has given the ability to us to make a choice. Now, I'm not talking about little choices like this, you know. Where are we going to go eat? What am I going to wear? So I'm talking about stuff that matters. Yeah. Stuff that matters in this earthly life and mostly, or most importantly, in our eternal life. Yes. God is a gentleman. He's not going to, he's not going to force you into nothing. Mm-hmm. I can't speak for you, but I know with me, God didn't, he didn't force me to go to the altar to go get saved. He didn't force me to go to the altar whenever I surrendered the call to preach. God didn't force me in anything. Yeah. God sat there knocking. Yeah. He's just... He ain't going to barge in. He ain't going to kick down the door and say, you're coming with me whether you like it or not. He gives you that opportunity. He gives you that free will. God has given us a choice whether we follow follow the path that he has for us or whether we don't. Whether we go our own way. Go the path that we want to go. The path that the world wants to take us. God didn't pass your fate off to the Illuminati. That's a... I'm not even going to get into that because it it makes me mad. But... uh, just stupidity yeah. that 
however many people, it, whether it's six, seven, however many it is, I don't know. I don't really care because it's not true. But that they depend that that's what my fate depends on. That that's what every, that everything in my life is decided upon. That they decide whether the sun's shining today, whether it's raining today, whether I get in a car crash, whether I don't. I'm, I'm fully dependent on God. Yeah. God is in control and he gives us the option of whether, whether or not we want to hop in with him. Yeah. We have that option. It's like a taxi driver. You can call a taxi over here and say, taxi, come here, I'm, come pick me up. But you don't have to get in. You have the opportunity to get in. You have the opportunity to go along and to follow him wherever he takes you. Only thing, we don't tell God where to go. I just thought of that. We don't tell God where to go. God tells us where to go. We follow him. You just hop in and say, I'm wherever you want to take me. Say, the best thing we can do is sit back in the, in the back seat and shut up. Let him take you wherever he wants you to take you. And lastly, we've got God was pleased. God was pleased. Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 31. And God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good. It was very good. You look on the fifth day just a few verses up. Uh, let me look here. I believe it's, uh, I believe it's yes, uh, verse number 25. The last part it says and God saw that it was good. It wasn't very good. Yeah. What God was not completely satisfied yeah. until man was created. Yeah. That's the only thing God created in the sixth day mm-hmm. was man. Yeah. God was not pleased until he had something to complement the rest of his creation. Yeah. We complement the rest of God's creation yeah. because we have wow. dominion over certain yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Adam had dominion over everything. Yeah. If Adam wanted... a Whatever to come here from five miles away, all he had to do was speak it, and here he'd be. Just dominion, because God was pleased, because God wanted something to complement his creation. Man complements all God's other creations. God was pleased when when he created us, and he was displeased when man fell. But Christ came and gave the opportunity for man to please God again. We have the opportunity to please God. Again, I believe that Christ seen how much that it hurt God when man fell. How broken God was. And he seen that man was doomed. He seen that man was had no hope. He says, Father, I got an idea. I, I know something, I know something that'll work. Take my life. I'm going to lay my life down. So that these people, these people that you so dearly love, can come to know you again. That fellowship can be restored. Because Christ wanted to restore that fellowship between, or that relationship between the creation and the creator. There, there's, I just, there's a virus in us. It's like a computer virus. It, it disrupts stuff. Sin is a virus. We've got that virus in us. Yeah. You've got to have. Sometimes you've got to have the Creator to get that out. Yeah. You got to have certain passwords. Yeah. You got to have certain keys yeah. to get that out. Yeah. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to Brother Ethan. But uh, just thank God that I'm that I'm human. Yeah. That I have the opportunity to go to heaven one yeah. day. Yeah. That I have the opportunity to serve God while I'm here. That I have the opportunity to know every single one of y'all. Y'all have been a blessing in my life. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be right here. If it wasn't for God, I'd be telling where I'd be right now. It scares me to think where I would be. But God showed his mercy and God showed his grace. And just making me human. And that God would become human. That God would become man and die for us. And die for the sins of the world. Brother Ethan, I'll turn it back over to you.